Hello and hope we're doing well. You've seen the news by now. Obama has rejected a contract from West Ham United. And the worst thing about this, well, actually, second worst. The worst thing is he's rejected a contract with West Ham. It's as simple as that. But the second worst thing is it's not surprising. When the news broke last night and I heard about it, I thought, well, of course he has. Why would he sign a new deal? There's far more reasons for him to reject it than there is for him to accept it. And that's the worst thing. There's no surprise. I'd be more surprised if the news broke that actually, just like Jai Boy, Mubama signed a new deal and he's committed his long term future to West Ham. I think, what, what, what have you done that for? Why are you doing that? I would actually question why he signed a new deal to some extent because there's very little evidence, there's very little reasons for him to commit. I think there's one big reason for him not to do so. So it's not surprising whatsoever, and I find that quite sad, actually. Now, fingers crossed, we can persuade the lad to commit his future to us and he can sign a new contract because I've got big hopes for him. I tend to, I think, I tend not to get carried away with the under-21s making at West Ham or under, the under-23s as they previously were. There's plenty that have come and go where there's maybe a lot of hype around them, but I watch them and I'm not convinced. I'm not too sure they'll make it. But with Mubama, it's different. I have watched him for the under-18s, for the under-21s, and thinking this guy's got it. But not only that, the senior team as well, whether it be, even if it is just in pre-season tournaments, that's all we've got to go on. That's all we've got to go on. But unlike Bowen, I was always confident Bowen was signing a new deal. I was always confident Suchek was signing a new deal because there's reasons there for them. Why would they not sign it? I think it would be a bigger gamble for them to maybe move elsewhere. They might not get what they get at West Ham. But with Mubama, I think the gamble would actually be to stay at West Ham. And I think that's particularly sad, truth be told. Anyway, different background. I'm on a mini tour of Scotland, if you like, this week. I come back up north to, to visit the family. And when, when we planned it, I thought, oh, this is a good week to go. West Ham don't have a game. Completely forgot about the Carabao Cup. So when the draw was made and we're at home to Arsenal, and messed up here a little bit. But anyway, if I upload again later on this week, another couple of videos... I don't know where it'll be. I'll have a different background in every video, possibly. Or maybe I'll just sit in the hotel like I am this morning and record it before I go out and about. But anyway, Gonzo and uh, Rob Gatesy, they did the Arsenal preview last night, so do check it out if you haven't done so already. But when this news broke, like I said, I wasn't surprised. Now, I'm trying not to go in too footed on David Moyes about everything at the minute. It is maybe a bit difficult to, but I don't want to just criticise him for everything. But in regards to this... I find it hard not to. Now, the truth is, we don't actually know the real reason that Mubama's rejected this contract. It could be financial. Maybe he wants a lot of money and we're not prepared to give it to him. Maybe that's the reason. But we don't know. You can only make assumptions and opinions based on the evidence you have. And one of the evidence we have in regards to Mubama is he's not had a chance. He's not had a chance in the first team. I would argue there's more than that, which is that he deserves a chance in the first team. He's done it at the under-18s, he's done it at the under-21s. He's been involved in the first team for quite some time now. He's often named on the bench. I know he wasn't named on the bench against Everton. So it raises the question, was he left out of the squad because he's refused a contract? Possibly. We've seen it before. We've seen it before with the likes of Harrison Ashby and Sonny Perkins that when they reject their contract at West Ham and decide their future lies elsewhere, they get taken out of the first team. And I understand that to some extent. I understand why Moyes wouldn't play players that aren't committed to West Ham. But the problem is, well, we played Declan Rice last season, didn't we? Declan Rice refused contracts. Declan Rice's future wasn't committed to the club. Well, we played him. And we had to. By the way, I'm not saying it was wrong to play Declan Rice. Before someone just suggests that I'm suggesting that we shouldn't play Declan Rice, that's not what I'm suggesting. What I'm saying is that we've had players in the past. We look at Fernales right now, his contract's running low. We'll, we'll play him, maybe not all the time, but he's picking up minutes here and there. Oh, funny thing, by the way. It's The Athletic that's reporting that Mubama's rejected a contract, and it's been followed up by ex employee as well. So I believe that he's rejected the new deal. But The Athletic are now reporting that there isn't an option in his contract. So it expires in summer 2024. So next summer it's expired, so he can leave on a free We'll get a bit of money um, from whichever club he goes to because we've offered him a new deal and he's in the age bracket, etc. But let's call that free. But while I was looking, because previously the Athletic, the athletic and I'm 90% sure of this, I've done an article saying that there was an option in Obama's contract for a further 12 months. So I've always been quite relaxed about it. Thinking, well, we can just flick the switch. He's here till 
another 12 months. We, you know, if David Moyes leaves in the summer, the new manager's got a year to hopefully utilize and persuade Mubama to stay at West Ham. So I was looking for this article and I found it. I did find it. They did report before there's an option in there. But while I was doing it, I discovered Fernals has got an extra uh, an option for a further 12 months on his contract. So we've all assumed that he's leaving for, in, for a free next summer and we should sell him in January. Well, actually, the club have got an option that they can go, there you go, an extra 12 months added to Pablo Fernals' contract. So maybe that's why there's a lack of noise around Fernals' lack of contract. But anyway, back to Obama. So that's the Athletic reporting it. When it comes to negotiations, I don't think buying a player and renegotiating with your player's contract are the same. Because there will be an element of, well, why would he accept the first contract? Who accepts the first contract? And I get that to some extent. But when you're buying a player, like when we were trying to sign James ward Price from Southampton, we went in and we lowballed it because we knew we had time on our side. We knew what Southampton wanted. And Charlie always remembers a quote that David Sullivan said. And Charlie remembers it word for word. I do not. So I'm going to give you a rough idea what Sullivan said. It was basically, if a club accepts your first offer for that player, you bid too much. Now, I don't often take advice uh, from David Sullivan. However, when he said that, I, I do think he's on the money there, right? So when a club accepts your first offer for a player, you've, it's too it's too high, you've gone in too high, so go low. And it is frustrating as a fan, let's be honest, when we heard that we were bidding 80 million or whatever it was for World Price, we all sniggered, because we all knew there was no chance that bid got accepted, but I don't think David Sullivan ever thought it would get accepted. He was basically saying, you want 40, well, I'm offering 18, let's negotiate, and we met in the middle with that 30 million. So I get why we do it when we're trying to buy players. It makes sense. But when it comes to negotiating a contract, I don't think it's the same thing. Because it's not like we would call Obama into the office and whack a contract down and say, there you go, what do you think of that, son? That, that's not how they work. There's weeks of talks that go on between club, player, agent, family members these days. There's weeks, months. Jared Bowen, we've been negotiating without giving Jared Bowen a contract offer. We've been talking to Jared Bowen for approximately 18 months before he signed this contract. 18 months. That's how long those talks happened. I'm sure we would have made some verbal offers and he would have rejected it. But I don't believe the club make, would make a formal offer without the talks happening. And you'd imagine that once those talks have happened and progressed, the club have got a rough idea what the player wants, vice versa. Then they make the formal offer. I almost expected it to be accepted due to they know what the player wants. So I often think when West Ham offer one of our players a new deal, they're expecting it to get accepted. And I think this is sometimes why these new contracts happen out the blue. We don't really hear anything about it. We get told the club are planning on negotiating with this player. The, plan, the club are planning talks with this player. And then one day you wake up and they've accepted a new deal. Oh, hang on, we didn't even know we offered him one. Because I'd imagine the talks happen and at the end of it, it's just a formality. Right, draw that up and put it on the table and get it signed. Like Kurt Zuma at the minute, we're getting told we're negotiating with Kurt Zuma. I don't think we'll hear anything until it either gets accepted or we get to the end and it's rejected. A bit like Ben Johnson. Talks, talks, talks. Oh, he's rejected it. And then since then, there's been nothing because it feels like it's come to a conclusion now that we just won't get to an agreement with Ben Johnson. And this is why I'm worried with Obama. If we put something on the table and he's rejected it, that, that, that scares me a little bit. That would suggest that he's almost made his mind up that he doesn't want to be at West Ham. And we've seen this before. Harrison Ashby, Sonny Perkins, Jeremy and Gakia. And I know people will say, yeah, but have any of them gone on to prove us wrong? That, while it is relevant, it's also a little bit irrelevant because it's a lack of opportunity. If players are leaving for lack of opportunity, it doesn't matter what they've gone on to achieve the other ones. What matters is there's players that are talented players that we want to keep, and we did want to keep those players. They're rejecting the contract because they don't believe they're going to get a chance at West Ham. They're going to get a chance elsewhere. As an Ashby thought it was Newcastle. Sonny Perkins thought it was Leeds, who was a Premier League club at the time. Jeremy and Gacchia went to Watford, also was a Premier League club at the time. These players are preferring to chance their future elsewhere. They've got more faith in other clubs giving them minutes, other managers giving them minutes than what we currently have at West Ham. And this is disappointing because it, it does want to mean that there's a domino effect. If other players look at, look at Mubama and think, well, if he's rejecting it and he's the closest one to the first team, what, what hope have I got? 
and I'm a bit biased because I speak to someone that's involved with someone that are under 21s, etc. And I know what their opinion is in regards to stuff. And it's not particularly a good thing. And it worries me a little bit. And now I'm seeing the room of Iron Man. Like I said, I'm trying not to go in two-footed on Moyes with everything here. But it's hard not to blame him. Because he should have had chances this season. I, we speak to Anton Ferdinand on a regular basis over on Patreon. Hey, patreon.com forward slash Hamish Chat. A little plug there. Uh, go join up from 360 a month. We do have a prediction competition. If you are a patron, though, do go log in. Because give us your score prediction for the Arsenal game and who you think will score first in the match. If you get it right, you're going to a draw. We pick one overall winner. If the overall winner is subscribed to the Addicts tier, they will win a signed Edson Alvarez shirt. So technically, there's a signed Edson Alvarez shirt up for grabs over on Patreon this week for the Arsenal prediction competition. So do get yourself logged in. It's it's part of Patreon. Say it's free, it's not free. You have to pay to subscribe to Patreon. But once you pay your subscription, it's, a, it's an additional feature. There you go. I don't like it when people say things are free. It's not free. It's included in the price. You know, um, if you buy these four things, the fifth thing's free, it's not free. It's included in price. You've already taken into consideration there's five things that that customer is getting and you've priced it for five things, not four things. You've just made on the extra ones free so anyway patreon.com first hamstring links in the description i think if i can add it while i'm on my phone it's in the description if not you're gonna have to type it out i've lost my train of thought now anton ferdinand we speak to anton ferdinand often over there and it's quite a good thing to ask a former penny league footballer a west ham fan but also a former academy graduate of west ham to get his perspective on stuff because it differs to how i view things of course it will and i ask i try and ask him the topical stuff so I've asked him about the, the, the academy before in regards to Mubama, and it was after the Lincoln game, because obviously Mubama didn't start that one. So I said to Anton, you know, what, what will Mubama be feeling when he's you know watching Danny Ng star? He's been around the first team for quite some time now. And Anton said when he was first involved in the first team, so he got to train with them and he got to go to the match. He wasn't even on the bench at this point. He was just involved. A bit like what Mubama has been for a while. Ollie Scarls has been. Moyes has given some of these players experience in around the first team and I think that's good I think that's good while I criticise Moyes a lot in regards to m minutes on the pitch he is good at involving them in and around the first team and training and stuff he is good at that so Anton said it's a buzz at first it's a buzz but it dies off pretty quickly you're used to it now you're now used to playing with the first team you're used to the first team training grounds etc then you're on the bench you're in the match day squad now and again it's a buzz but again, it dies off. You get used to it. You're used to being on the bench. And then eventually it's, it's, you get to the point as a player where it's like, right, I'm ready to play now. All minutes now. I want to be coming off the bench. I want to be starting games. And if that don't come, you get a little bit fed up. And I've always remembered that. And you're looking at Mubamba. He's not even in the match they squad now against Everton. And it's the chicken and the egg. Why should Moyes give Mubama a chance if he won't commit his future? Well, why should Mubama commit his future if Moyes doesn't get him a chance? And this is the problem we have with Harris and Ashby. Moyes wouldn't play Ashby because he wouldn't sign a new deal. Ashby wouldn't sign a new deal because Moyes wouldn't play him. And we know what happened. He left. And I'm worried they're going to lose Mubama. And the people will say, how do you know he's good enough? Well, how do we know he's not? We don't know. And I don't think it's as simple as look at what they've achieved once they've left West Ham because everything's changed. The development's changed. It's a sm I, I, I would imagine for young players like Mubama is in right now, the, the window for progression is slim. No player at 18 or 19 as he is now, no player is ready for Premier League football just like that. They don't go from under 21s straight into the Premier League first team and smash it. Some do and they're world class. Wayne Rooney did. He was world class. But generally, they need bedding in. You're gambling on potential. Declan Rice wasn't ready. When we first started playing Declan Rice in the first team, he was not a Premier League player. He was a player that could become a Premier League player, but he needed that chance. You look at Harry Kane, he's the perfect example. Spurs loaned him out, Leicester, Norwich, and he was crap, didn't do it. Didn't do it for Leicester, didn't do it for Norwich. Then Spurs had Europa League football, and the other strikers were unavailable. Who was it? Soldado, I think it was at the time. So they thought, well, we'll just give the young lad a chance. They put him in, he scored. Okay, let's keep putting him in. Now look at him. Scoring goals from the halfway line for Bayern Munich. But sometimes it's that chance, it's that small moment of football, that opportunity he got, he took it. But Bama's not had that. He's not had that small chance. We played Lincoln. We didn't use him. We played 
the Europa League games, we've not started them yet. We've got Arsenal tomorrow night. Will we start them then? No. I'm very confident we will not start Mubama up front. And when Antonio's banging in all the goals and Antonio's in great form, I kind of understand the pathway to the first team being blocked. But let's, let's be realistic here. Antonio's bang out of form. Danny Ings hasn't scored a goal in 21 appearances now. What more needs to happen for Mubama to get on the pitch? I can't think of anything. Apart from Antonio and Danny Ings both breaking their legs. Actually, even if that happened, even if they both broke their legs, he still wouldn't play. It would be Caduce up front. If that wasn't working, Paqueta would go up front. If that wasn't working, Bowen would go up front. Whatever. The point is, he'd keep playing all these senior players rather than give Mubama a chance. So Mubama's rejected a new deal. This is bad news for West Ham. It's bad news for the academy. But it's not surprising news. I think that's a really bad thing. Um, you know, we hoped Mark Noble would change things. I assume he's the one leading the, the contract negotiations here. If he's the one with the other youngsters with his arm around them, like Daniel Rigg and George Earthy, I think it's fair to assume that Mark Noble's the one leading negotiations for Mubama, and he's not got Mubama's signing deal. Say that, Mark Noble failed to get Jared Bowen's signing deal. Tim Steiden was the one that had to get him to do it. Hopefully, Steiden can get involved or something. Because this kid, I'm confident, has a big future in the game. And I want to see it in Clout in Blue. Not somewhere else in the Premier League because we didn't give him a chance here. Academy of Football at the London Stadium. Someone roll up that little bit of carpet and chuck it in the skip because it really ain't. Anyway, I'm going to disappear. Um, we're off to the beach. And um, I know you're thinking, the beach in Scotland? Listen, I'm used to going to the beach in Scotland without the sun. So when there's no sun, it don't make a difference. It's beautiful. It's still a lovely place to go. Enjoy your day, whatever you're up to. If you've enjoyed this ramble, please do drop a like on it. Give me your thoughts in the comments below. Subscribe if you're new to Hammers Chat. Head over to patreon.com forward slash Hammers Chat. But if you are a patron, please do enter, especially if you're an, if you're an addict. Sign Edson Alvarez's shirt up for grabs. I'll give you a tip. If you're going to say West Ham win 2-1, which is fine, I wouldn't put Mubama as the first goal scorer.